yeah. Anyways, the first anomaly of the night is SCP-5252, aka the uh the Lantern Bearer. Alright. <laughs> Item SCP-5252, Object Class Keter. Special Containment Procedures. Due to the operative zone of SCP-5252, remaining immobile, er, re remaining immobile, area area 5252 encompasses SCP-5252. It's known range of travel and one kilometer buffer zone. Right. No alterations or additions to land, flora, or fauna are permitted. All Foundation members are to undergo training protocol B. SC-5252 to minimize damage to the area before be assigned to Area 5252. Getting the feeling it sounds familiar, but anyways. Uh, description SP-5252 is approximately 2 meter tall humanoid entity of inter intermediate race and gender which carries an oil lantern. Huh? Oh, keep going. Yeah. Okay. Reported details regarding its appearance are sparse and unclear. SCP-5252 travels at, at will by unknown means throughout a 26.6 square kilometer section of land located in the central region of Nepal, within the Himalayan mountains. The area includes a remote mountain pass, numerous hiking trails, and a local village. A pattern of injuries, thefts, and disappearances have been attributed to SCP-5252, most often seen on adjacent peaks or trails moving along at a walking pace. Sightings of this entity date back in local records of to 1435, but oral traditions put the potential first emergence of SCP-5252 within the 12th century. Instances of this entity come into closer range of observers are primarily during inclement weather. Reports indicate that lone or paired climbers who become lost often mistake it for a Sherpa or rescuer and follow the entity back to the trailhead. SCP-5252 has only been observed as a dark outline of a tall humanoid figure. SCP-5252 stays several meters ahead of the observer and does not respond to verbal commands or in inquiries, regardless of the language spoken. Once the observed figure reaches the trailhead, it will stop and wait for the hikers to catch up to it. Survivors report that the brightness of the lantern makes any details of the figure indistinguishable, but a dark hand is held out open palm to the lone or nearest human. If the individual fails to present 5252 with an item, it will take the, an object by force or inflict injury. Sightings and encounters with 5252 have been found to be increasing in conjunction with rising numbers of tourists in the area. Addendum 1. During Foundation operations to gather intelligence on on 5252, within the village, an incident involving a two tourist hikers occurred October 13th, redacted. One survivor and, and one local ser serving as a Sherpa were taken into Foundation custody and interviewed. Determined on the facts of the event and entity motivations considered top priority by Dr. Clark. Assigned head researcher for 5252 and Area 5252. Interviewed, Andrew J. Wilson, from Incident Reported, October 13th, Redacted. Interviewer, Dr. Clark, Head Researcher of Area 5252. Begin log, 10 hours post-discovery by Virtualing Foundation Security after receiving emergency medical attention from Foundation physicians. Dr. Clark. How are you doing, Mr. Wilson? Wilson. 
it gave me some good stuff, and I'm, so I'm not feeling much. But it's day long. I like to go home. Well, we try to keep things brief. But we need honest answers from you. Uh, I do my best. Once you started along the right action portion of the past, what do you remember? We were just hacking, making good time. We were set to make the next peak by eating, but all of a sudden, the weather started to turn, so we started to head back. Did anything seem out of the ordinary? Like what? I don't hike much, so I wouldn't know. Nothing. We were a bit worried, might lose our way, visibility was dropping quick, but nothing weird. Not until that thing showed up. What thing do you mean? I thought it was our Sherpa at first, something to find us. I had a lantern and was walking ahead of us, so he followed it back. What happened once you reached the trailhead? A silence of several seconds followed by a rattling sigh. <coughs> that thing, whatever it was, held its hand out. You called it a thing. Are you sure it wasn't just a person? I don't know what it was, but it sure as hell wasn't a person. And its eyes. What about its eyes? When it took him, I couldn't see anything because of how damn bright that light was. But when it grabbed him, the light went out. And I saw two glowing eyes for just a second before Bill started screaming. What do you mean that it took him? I can see Bill behind me. The locals warned me to give it something. I turned to get it something out of my pocket. Not sure what I was planning on grabbing. Before I could stop him, Bill went at it with his machete. Sounds of forceful and prolonged coughing. Dr. Clark's notes here that Wilson's primary facial wound was becoming exacerbated. They chose to cut the interview shorter than exacerbated. It chose to cut the interview sh shorter than initially planned. Less final questions were omitted to curb excessive blood loss of the victim. What was the machete for? Oh, um, just protection. On what? Big cats, mostly. Sure. How did you come by your injuries? Like I told those doctors, it happened so fast. I think it hit me when it grabbed Bill. I f it felt like a fucking sledgehammer with claws. Am I going to be okay? We're stabilizing you. You should be fine. But you'll most likely require a good deal of re reconstructive surgery. I'd also recommend sticking out an occulist if you wish. What's an occulist? Occulist if you wish. Sorry. No, I was like, what is that? I don't know. I'm looking that up. Sounds of Wilson thickly swelling, followed by sniffing. Did you guys find Bill yet? Not yet, but we're looking. We should have never come here. End log. Post interview note by Dr. Carl. Oh. oh. A person who makes artificial eyes. Oh. oh. Redacted days after the incident, William Bill Redacted was found approximately five kilometers from the initial point of contact with 5252. The cause of death was determined by to be exposure. This information has been temporarily withheld from the subject due to the risk of, of shock and possible memory loss. I have a theory. Yeah. Andrew was spared because he was moving to give the SCP an offering, like the locals had told him. The right. friend who had been about to machete him was not spared because machete. Yeah. Okay. When I first started reading this one, at first I got it confused with the, the man on the mountain. Not man on the mountain. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what I got confused with. I was like, this sounds familiar. Wait, no, this is not him. <laughs> they... Don't worry, there's many horrible things on different mountains. Wait, isn't Man on Mountain also in Himalayan Mountains? <laughs> Himalayas has enough room for all the monsters. <laughs> Does that mean it's sometimes? Yeah. Does that mean fifty two fifty two might have seen the man on mountain at some point? <laughs> I'm not going to try to imagine two SCPs going head to head. Right. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Interviewed. Beg Ad Hikari. Hired guide involved in incident reported on October 13th. Redacted. Interviewer Dr. Clark, head researcher of Area 5252. Begin log. 11 hours post discovery by Petroleum Foundation Security after completion of interview with Andrew J. Wilson. Dr. Clark, thank you for coming then, Dr. Adhikari. Are, are you sure you don't want us to bring in a translator? Adhikari, no, English is okay. We haven't encountered many English speakers in your village. Yes, there are not many. I need to learn to work with the tourists. Have you worked with many hikers and camps? Yes, since I was a young man. What did Mr. Wilson and Mr. Protected come to Nepal? They told me they wanted to hike the Himalayas and see the land. And was there anything in particular they wanted to see? Some of the peaks and the forest near my village. Did anything out of the ordinary happen? They lied to me. They lied to you. Yes. Also. They said they wanted to hike and ride the land. But they wanted to take it from us. They wanted to take your land. Did they tell you that? They did not need to. Both men had a... Chora. To go oh. break... Which is... A common Nepalese term for blade or knife. With them. They tried to hide them, but I saw. What did you think they were for? To cut the cut the trees. I'm sorry, those are not ma made for cutting trees. <laughs> we cut them down. No no. Marking the best areas to come back to later. With their lumber company. Our land, our trees, our people. They are not for sale. So what did you do? Did you harm them? I did no harm. I returned home without them. The mountain would take care of it. They must leave. And you must leave. Not right now. We still have some questions. No, I am going to return home. You should as well. Alright, Mr. Adhikari. I'll continue to interview another time. Speaking with me will not help you. If you wish to know more about land and what resides within it, you must speak to the Jadana, which is Nepalese for connection. Use it in this instance as a proper noun or title by the interviewee. Alright. Who is that? Sounds of metal chairs scraping across the floor, followed by fading footsteps. Mr. Akali, wait. We are not finished here. The interviewee attempted to lead the Foundation outpost and refused to respond to any further in inquiries from the Foundation staff. He was allowed to return, but is being kept under surveillance until further noticed. End log. <coughs> I was fishy. Yep. Alright. Addendum 2. All Foundation containment activities will be put on hold until reauthorization is given. 
Further investigation into SCP-5252 is ongoing. Incident Report 5252-1 October 21st, Redacted. Containment Unit-3 posted 0.3 kilometers outside the Redacted Village. Casualties and in injuries consisted of 3 construction personnel killed, 5 injured, 3 security personnel killed. One surviving Foundation member, Security Officer Renee S. Peterson, gave her account of the incident as she was lucid but unable to be moved from the infirmary at the time of her statement. Again, audio file? Alright, begin audio file. Operations and surveys in the area haven't been going smoothly. The planning markers for the containing wall were in and, and the construction team was, was felling a few trees they're in a way. We had only been out there for only been out there for an hour. I I clocked the time about redacted AM. But I knew we were gonna be out there for the next several hours. Containment information is being sped up since civilian death they documented last week. One of the locals came up to us. He had a couple of books or journals in his arms. And he was babbling. Scared the shit out of me when he ran up. He just kept talking louder and louder. Most of the crew was getting uncomfortable. We didn't have a translator with us, so I pointed back to the village and asked him to leave. I had no idea what he wanted. He did try to shove one of these books into my hands. I had one of the other security guys escort him off. I was in the mood to deal with that shit. I was trying to keep eyes on every member of the team, but between the foliage and the distance across the work site, I lost sight on I lost sight of sight on a few. One of the furthest guys to my three o'clock started screaming, and then he just stopped. Screw the crew started panicking and all we could see was this blur between the trees. They were dropping like flies and there was so much blood. I didn't want to risk shooting one of my men, but it wouldn't have mattered anyway. It was too fast. After just a minute or two, I was the only one left. Then I saw it. Tall, dark, carrying a bright light. I didn't get a good look at it before it smacked my gun out of my hands. Last thing I remember is being thrown to the ground. The eyes too. Like the sun. End audio file. After partial amputation of three fingers on her left hand and full amputation <coughs> of her dominant arm above the elbow. Oh. S.O. Peterson has been medically discharged from duty. Thirty-two hours after the incident on October twenty-first, redacted individual referred to as Jana, Mister Ed Hikari, was located by investigation agents and brought in for questioning by Doctor Clark. Interviewed, Sang Acharya, a young man referred to as the Jana, and a resident of the redacted village. Interviewer, Dr. Clark, head researcher of Area 5252, begin log. Dr. Clark, thank you so much for coming in, Mr. Acharya. I'm sure you have some idea as to why you're here. <clears throat> Acharya, please <laughs> just call me Sang. And yes, I know why. You need answers and you help to get them from me. We've spoken to a few people from your village, and all of them have mentioned you. I'm hoping you can help us. What can you tell us about this entity? Entity. Something that attacks those hackers and my colleagues. We need to know everything you know. 
The ones that are tearing apart the floors by our village. Here with them. Yes, but we're not here to do harm. I'm sorry, but I have nothing for you. Nothing to tell you. You need to leave. Now. We could leave and we need your help. No. You people make things worse for us. If you continue on this path, you'll destroy everything. Please, son, I don't want to see anyone else die. They died because of you. We made a mistake and we want to correct it. You failed to understand it or anything about this place. Yes, but we, we want to. Please help me understand. I truly want to. Dr. Clark's voice becomes low and soft. Being on the audio from his microphone has been digitally enhanced slightly. The, the interviewee pauses and places his, hand, his head in his hands for several seconds. Why? I want to trust my colleagues. Some of them were my friends or as close to friends as you, as you can get to my job. Also, I'm a researcher. I have no interest in the temple, the land, or anything material. I just want knowledge. Please, son. Several moments of silence follow. You truly mean that. Oh, very much so. Alright. I'll share what I know with you. Come to my home tomorrow, and I'll allow you to study the text and journals. Even make copies. The Jadana that came before me have left behind a wealth of information. My own book may... may... My own book may even hold some value to you. Maybe once you have this knowledge, you'll be wise enough to understand why it's best to leave things be. I'll need to bring a team with me for my safety and yours. Fine, but tread lightly. Naturally. And log. Oh. Okay, I don't like how Addendum 3 has an instant report and multiple documents. Well, the document, the first document's very short. Oh, the others seem to be short, too. Alright. Addendum 3, Incident Report 5252-2. October 23rd, redacted. 5252 has en was engaged by Foundation staff during operations to create a more permanent base within the redacted village. Interview a person of interest. During the ensuing combat, a fire ignited on the exterior of a civilian home. Due to most structures in the area being composed of highly flammable materials, such as wood and straw, as well as an inadequate firefight fighting equipment, destruction of the village was virtually total and resulted in massive casualties of both locals and Foundation members. Analysis of the scene showed an overturned hanging lantern, lantern as the source of the fire. Torn material lodged in the edge of the lantern housing was found to be the same as that of the Foundation Security Uniform Fest. A Foundation Forensic team determined that cause of the fire to be accidental, but ultimately puts the Foundation partially at fault. A fire damaged leather bound journal was recovered from the wreckage of a civilian home by Dr. Clark, and, a trans and, and translated from Nepalese. Legible pages include the following Document 5252 1. May, May 29th, redacted. Ita came to me this morning with the gift of the spirit. Even so, young, my sister understands the importance of our connection with the land and it. It warns me to know I have served as a good example to her. Since this is our first offering, hoping the spirit accepts it. I'm concerned, though, that I will leave a rock behind, no matter how pretty and shiny. Ita is insists it is. Like me, she fell in love with the mountain, the animals, the trees on her walks. I do wish she would load up load the pockets of her skirt with the stones every outing though 
Regardless, I have a lovely new paper weight that I agree is even prettier and shinier. Document 5252 2. I hate to say this, but Discord's been cutting you off. Oh. Were you able to get the gist of everything? I was. I, I basically read it in my head every time you started going blank. Oh. <sighs> Sorry. It's fine. Yeah. Alright. Document 5252-2 April 30th, Redacted Mother was kind enough to leave me supper on the table for when I returned from the mountain. Despite it being springtime, the snow is thick on the trails and passes. I came home half-frozen long after the sun had set. My covenant with the spirit has paid off, though. It spoke for a productive farming season all through autumn. Nothing last year must have been enough to make up for the most of the damage done by the tourists. Document 5252-3 May 14th, Redacted I woke last night to a light by my window. A visit to the village from the spirit has only happened a few times since the death of my predecessor. She taught me so much over the years, but my knowledge can only do so much, and I miss her guidance. The spirit is a strange thing, and nothing I've been taught is certain. I'm not sure the reason for this, but it's restless. Ina left another one of the precious stones out of the windowsill for the spirit. That silly girl called it here by marking the wall of the house. I should have never showed her the offering symbol. Thankfully, I can see the light heading out of the village, back to the mountain. It must be satisfied with its gift. Still, it's been more active. This makes me nervous, but only time will tell what it means. Document 5252-4 June 7th, to, uh, Redacted More and more foreigners are coming to the mountain the past several years. The land is starting to wear down and be altered. They come in, go where they wish, and do what they wish. They leave their unwanted rubbish behind with us. The spirit is growing restless. It still appears to me and the people of my village in aid. But I fear what may happen if this dis disrespect is allowed to continue. October 13th, Redacted. I must convene with the elders and assist we begin to lim limit tourist permits. Before something far worse comes to pass, a visiting foreigner lost his life to the mountain and his friend nearly so. I saw for myself that the spirit put out its eye, but he will live to tell what happened. Hopefully now will dissuade some. But Beck confided in me that he suspected the men were sent by a lumber company. He doesn't wish to work as a Sherpa any longer. I respect his choice. I'm not sure those men deserve what happened to them. But it doesn't suffer fools. Document 5252-5 October 15th, Redacted. A large group of strange people came to the village. They seemed to be trying to pass as cu curious tourists or scientists looking to research the land. But something is not quite right. I can sense the agitation of the spirit. I plan to visit the mountains tonight. To see if it will speak with me. It has been more and more quiet as the damage has been done. I return home from the peak and my heart is filled with terror. The spirit wouldn't speak with me. It wouldn't even show itself. This is a terrible omen of things to come, I fear. October 21st, Redacted. I knew this would end in bloodshed and death. A group of the outsiders were wiped from the mountain just outside the village. Along with a few of our people. No one permitted them to build anywhere near our land. I tended to speak with one of their leaders just before the attack. She sent me away like I was an ignorant child. Getting in the way of their work. The spirit marked me before my family even did. Traditionally, I believe mothers stay secluded in a dark room for several hours after birth. Five, seven days after birth. The newborn's eyes are outlined with gagel. 
which is suit from an from an oil lamp and butter, and his forehead marked with a black tika. This is a ceremony to formally welcome the child to the family. Alright, anyways. Even after all these years, the suit still has not faded. My connection with it is still strong, yet they question me. The spirit still will not speak with me, but I will not give up. I must prove to it my people still respect and care for our land and one another. These strangers will not heed my warnings either. Between it and them, one will bend to the other. And I fear what will happen if this conflict truly comes to bear. I think we can tell which addendum it was where they dismissed him like a child. Yeah. Oh, the foundation messed up. Yep. Addendum 4. Attempts to locate Sang Acharya, the author of the journal, has been unsuccessful. Security personnel followed human tracks from the found journal for nearly 4 kilometers, heading towards the nearest mountain peak. Before the trail becomes impassable, a torn piece of parchment identical to the makeup of the journal previously referenced was found near the wreckage of the village. Showing document 5252-6. Researchers studying this case note here that the, that the handwriting of this particular entry appears to be rushed and made by a shaking hand. The parchment is marred and with a substance shown to be by testing a mixture of human blood and oil-based suit. Everything is gone. My people are all dead or scattered to the nearest villages for refuge. Most of the foreigners who came here are gone, dead or run away. The spirit has provided so much and now it's taken everything. The village has burned to the ground. My mother and father, along with my brother and baby sister, have perished. There's absolutely nothing left for me here. My only path is to travel up the mountain and help to convene with the spirit one last time before I give myself to the land. Signings of a second iteration of, of 5252, henceforth referred to as 5252-A, have been cited along 5252 and documented by security personnel. And that's it of the anomaly. Okay, I actually thought it would take me longer to read it, but... It wasn't that long. Yeah. <laughs> also, that's very good. I like at the end how it suggests without saying out loud that the one guy that kept telling the stupid outsiders what was going on ends up joining the spirit. It wasn't his fault they were stupid. Yeah, I like it too. So, who wrote it? Red ba Bannered Mayor. They did good. Yeah. I also kind of like how for this specific anomaly, there's like Overwatch Command Site 1 International Database Design. <sighs> Are you ready, Jerry? Oh. Oh, wait. First, we gotta do the thumbnail. I almost forgot. Wait, did you... Were you able to add the whole racism thing? Yeah, I added that. Okay. Wait, that sounds bad out of context. <laughs> <laughs> did you judge the other videos we saw on that level of racism? Okay. Um, I think... I think everything's good right now. But anyways... Okay. Um, Let's see that thumbnail. Is it good? Is it bad? Oh no, this is also my first time seeing the thumbnail. How bad is it? Oh, that's so weirdly racist! I, I didn't know how they would make- I didn't- <sighs> Okay. Okay, I want to get something correctly. Nepal is in Africa, right? Nepal? Yeah. 
Am I correct? And Paul's in Africa? It's like a country in Africa? I'm looking it up. Google why. <laughs> Asia. I was in Asia. Yes, but I believe the people there have dark skin. And Remember, there's a white hand. Every, <laughs> yeah. Not everyone has has the same skin tone. Yeah. You know what I I I I think it was I think I got confused with another country that starts in 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 Africa. I think that's why I got it confused. My bad. But anyways, what are we rating the thumbnail? I think you already know. <laughs> Four. It's not accurate to the SCP in any way whatsoever besides the lantern. And they <laughs> somehow made it racist. <laughs> you want, want to know why I think that? Sure. It was described as a black humanoid figure. Now, what mythological being from what part of the world is... Connect to the cold. And how far is it away from Nepal? How far away is it from Nepal? I'm saying the closest they have to that is an indigo. Um. So this is a weird amount of racism. I didn't even know it's possible from a thumbnail. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. Was it, what did people in chat feel about it? Oh. <laughs> yes, chat. Am I right? Am I wrong? <laughs> Do you think it's racist for them to take an SCP that's supposed to be a black humanoid figure with eyes like the sun and turn it into... Some weird Europeanized indigo thing with a lantern. Now, Jerry, watch how they probably like make make them a uh, an a the anomaly an African American in, in, in the video. Don't say that. <laughs> And I love how respectful it was. Yeah. And I love so much about it. But this. Yeah, main thing I like about it is like it's. I will say there it, it has been a problem with a lot of anomalies where it's like, it's super destructive, hard to contain. Uh, you have to use so many NTF agents to take it down, like. It, it goes away from that. They wouldn't have done anything if people at the foundation had left it alone. Right. It actually steps away from that, and it adds a bit more mystery because when they're about to find out more about it, the fire started. Yeah, it was kind of like the people are like, "Dude, leave, or things will get worse." The foundation's like, "Let us go in more." <laughs> yeah. All right. So we got that done. You ready for the? Are you ready for the video? Yeah. Oof. Oh yeah, you see the caution disturb content and suing uh, consider yourself warned. Yeah. They stopped doing it. <laughs> Eventually oh. in some of the videos further ahead. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> this was only okay. temporary. <laughs> oh. All right. Hold on, let me get this up. Right there. And that should be not nice and loud. Alright, in three, two. Oh wait, first let's see if they actually did the thing. Oh yeah, they did. Okay, just making sure. In three, two, one. The two men followed behind, blindly allowing the stranger to guide them. They had set out earlier in the day what? to trek and survey the area. But a few hours prior, their Sherpa, Tenzing, had disappeared. 
It didn't matter anyway. It was easier and more discreet for them to do what they had actually come here for without him watching. Are you okay, Jerry? Well, think of this. Why would red pandas exist there? <laughs> I don't In fact, know. Let's look up. Are red pandas even in the fall? Because I don't think they are. All right. Hey, Bookworm, are you here? Wait, Bookworm, if you are here, type pussy in chat. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, red pandas do live in the mountains of Nepal, central China, and northern Myanmar. Okay, <laughs> it's not racist. <laughs> It just seemed really weird to immediately fucking show a bunch of red pandas. <laughs> I'm sorry for assuming badly. They have a bad track record. Yeah, they do. Anyways. Watching them. They called out to the tall stranger with the lantern, but no reply was forthcoming. He just continued walking forward to what they hoped was the pathway back to the village. The figure in front of them came to a halt, just up ahead. They had reached the trailhead. As the two men reached the tall figure, it slowly turned, raising the lantern in front of its face. The intensity of the light obscured its features. The only thing they could make out were glowing, red eyes. It put forth a hand, palm up, as if asking for something. Its fingers were long and curled, with sharp elongated fingernails. What? The first man looked back at the other, questioning what was all this about. Then he remembered the folk stories the villagers had warned him about. It had to be appeased. He reached into his pocket. Well, yeah, the villagers did, but I, was, I thought their guide had told them. Yeah, what the fuck? And it wasn't told as folk tale, but as warning. <laughs> Hey, Jerry, we managed to make it more than 10 seconds before getting mad. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Pocket, but as he did, he heard his friend yell and run forward, brandishing a machete. <laughs> Welcome back. I Today I bring. The stupidest thing his friend could have done. Yeah, but, okay, he, here's the thing. In the article, they kind of gave more of a reason why the friend would pull out a machete and attack it. Here, it just made no sense. He just pulled out a machete on a person he went to attack. <laughs> well, yeah, but in both versions, I still think that's fucking stupid. Once yeah. You're just a and you don't know what it is. But why do you think the first thing you should do is attack it? Right. <laughs> Are you ready to continue? Yeah. You SCP-5252, the Lantern Bearer. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. What the? I am Moralia. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, it's a, f it's a fucking. <laughs> I'm skipping it. <laughs> I was wait, what is this part in the SCP? That's a hell of a story. What do you think it is? A oh, Yeti? God damn it! Not these it's two, a Yeti, right? <laughs> Come on, Yeti, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I bet one of them will get a girlfriend just so the channel can go. They're not gay, see? <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Jerry. Yeah. Uh, Rule Thirty Four agrees with you. But it's too... <laughs> Sorry. You can bite me. <laughs> Do I really need to dignify that answer? Called it. Yeti time. What? No, it's not a Yeti. Did you hear me say anything what about white fur? About this thing was... Nepal, I think. Is it like... 
Is our Yetis more Western? Let me look up Yeti myth origin. Cause I'm pretty sure like Yeti was like more of a Western thing, cause like it's like Bigfoot, but in ice mountains. <laughs> Let's see, the Yeti, a story of scientific misunderstanding. What? <laughs> okay, it's in the Himalayas. Okay, well, so we're both wrong. <laughs> but anyways. But anyways. Let's continue. Carrying a lantern and more humanoid than some massive ape creature. So what? Drunk guy? What's that got to do with the foundation? For crying out loud. Glowing red eyes. Long creepy fingers. Uh... Hold on. I'm going to go back. Did he even describe long creepy fingers? No. Let's see. And... No, it's just tall humanoid of entertainment race and gender. Wait a minute. Entertain it does have is no race or gender. That's because it's so vague looking, you can't see its gender. Meanwhile, they gendered it. Yeah. Did they gender discriminate in SCP? Probably. <laughs> it's a good thing we added the offensiveness <laughs> and did the fucking score sheet. All right, right. Anyway, Nepal, here we come. Base camp is operational, sir. Preliminary interviews Wait, have been conducted. Hold on. All leads point to the. Hold on, have you. Hold on, the music. Anyway, Nepal, here we come. <laughs> Did they add elevator music while talking yeah. about the... <laughs> it's saying... an SCP, literally about the SCP Foundation, not figuring out when no means no. They're adding elevator music in. Yeah. Oh, Jerry, before we continue with this, there's something I wanted to, I want to show you. Yeah. Alright. Look at you see do you see the thumbnail for the the last SCP video they made? You know what? Good for zero four nine. <laughs> we have to do zero four nine again. <laughs> you know he gets bondage. Good for him. Yeah. Camp is operational, sir. Preliminary interviews have been conducted. All leads point to the Jadana. It's sort of like the village's spiritual leader. Shall I bring him in? Yes. Oh my god! Do it, not what it means. Let's go back down here. Get the actual definition. Jadana. Nepalese. Nepalese for connection. Use it instance as a proper noun or title by the interviewee. He's literally the connection to the spirit. He's not a spiritual leader. Yeah. <laughs> I suspect we're going to need his help again. Leave it to me. Gently is my middle name. What? You stay here. Let them handle that. I need you to check over the perimeter. You underestimate me. Such a waste of my many, many talents. Chen walked yeah. the perimeter with another field agent, expecting the work that had been completed prior to their arrival. You know, These the perimeter fences. Uh, Nepal? Uh, this is an SCP in Nepal in one of the mountains. Uh -huh. It's basically a mysterious nature-based spirit that has an unknown gender and unknown appearance as people just see it as a black figure that basically holds a lantern so you can't see what it looks like in any way besides it's a black humanoid shape also people have described its eyes as being like the sun jerry 
They gendered the SCP. They made it look like a walking corpse. Hey, Jerry. I have a bit of a problem with the NTF uniforms right now. Like, most of it is fine, except they add a giant crotch protector. I'm really angry with these right now. These do not look like what a uniform would look like if it was designed for snow. Yeah. Wait, Think this... Of this. Where is their bags? Right. Yeah. Why do they have a bunch of fucking tiny pouches on their chest? That's impractical. Wait, was it even stated what MTF is over here? Or just say MTF in general? Just MTF in general. Ow. Oh. oh, well. But one of the Two. people was a woman. Yeah. Too shallow. Leave them for the night, but tomorrow I want them sunk in deeper. The searchlight suddenly lit up as the perimeter sirens oh, rung out. What? Why? The, huh? the alarm just went off. <laughs> there was no alarm. The interview with the one guy was cut out of the of the thing, and they've already cut out two characters because the interview says a lot about both characters. Yeah. Let's go. There had been an attack at containment unit number three, nearby the local village. What happened here? Sir, uh, two construction personnel and three security personnel. Dead. Five injured. The Jadana came to us with books, babbling incoherently. I have tried wait, wait. to calm them down. Did they replace the sole survivor female with a black man? Yep. I think this is the color the woman was, only that she was a woman. Yeah. Okay. This is the Wait, first time. <laughs> this is the first time they've done this too. You know what? Let's let's see if they erase any of the other female characters. But he wouldn't have it. Anyway, I had him detained offside and we resumed felling trees. It came out of nowhere. Before I knew what happened, they were dead. Can I offer you some tea? No, I'm, I'm Why fine. Do I sound... Why do I feel like that was also weirdly racist? You heard how he spoke, right? Mm -hmm. Like a little clueless? Maybe. Yeah. Well... I don't know, maybe I'm just fishing. Yeah, all right. It seems a little weird how slow he spoke. Yeah. Okay, straight to business then. Yes, I would prefer that. You are the Jadana. I am, but you can call me Sang. Okay, Sang, can you explain what's going on here? I tried to warn them, but they wouldn't listen to me. All of you, you need to all leave now before it's too late. Too late? Too late for what? You've upset the spirit of the forest. It will come back for you. What have we done to upset your spirit? You come here year after year. Wait, 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 you wait. litter. He never said spirit of the forest. He said spirit. Yeah. You disrespect the land, damage our trees. Do you think you could do this with impunity? You mean the tourists? We calm the spirit and provide offerings to appease it. But every year it gets worse. If you don't leave now, I fear for all of us. I see. And the two men before me? They were not tourists. They said they were, but they were not. Tenzing knew that they were surveyors for a logging company. He left them on the trail to fend for themselves. Sang stood up. Now I must leave and try to calm the spirit. I warn you now. Leave. That is before not it's exactly too late. How Chen that. stood up. Yeah. I feel like this is weirdly dishonest. Like, why would you leave? 
to block the man's path. It's okay to let him go. The alarms blared, awaking Chen and Kloss from their sleep. An agent came running in. Sir, fire near the village! From what they could see, most of the village had burned Why down. are you just walking so calmly? <laughs> Also, yeah, they are. Also, this confirms they literally cut out the one female SCP officer. Yeah. Bodies. Wait, I just noticed the the bodies of the MTF personnel. They look like they died from frostbite because <laughs> of the skin color they use. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, why is that guy just standing like nothing happened? What? Both foundation staff. <laughs> He's the standing there, like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> oh, I should have listened to his warning. What happened here? SCP-5252 engaged personnel. We're not sure how the fire broke out, but one of the men might have dropped the lantern nearby one of the wooden houses during the chaos. Did the SCP come into the village? Negative. The men were preparing to extend a section of the wall when it was spotted. They engaged. Where's the Jadana? Where's Saint? We haven't been able to locate him. Get a Sherpa and make sure he's a good tracker. They followed the man through the tight passes, heading higher up the mountain. It was dark is, and bitterly yeah, cold. Happened? Nope. The only light coming from their flashlights and the Sherpa's torch up ahead. He had picked up a trail leaving the village. There were two sets of footprints, one larger set slightly older than the first. As they rounded a precarious bend in the mountain, they saw the Sherpa up ahead, stalked with his lantern held high. They slowly approached and surveyed the surrounding areas. They couldn't see Wait, anything. hold on. Why have we stopped? All right, you see how he, he has dark skin here, right? Yeah. Okay, give me a moment, give me a moment. Stop. Look. Look at his hand right there. Look at his hand. Wait, isn't he supposed to have a glove on? Yeah. He, he, they turned him white for one With scene, held high, but then come over here, he's dark-skinned. <laughs> uh. What the fuck? Approached ...and surveyed the surrounding areas. They couldn't see anything. Why have we stopped? The man pointed at the ground without looking away. The footprints led to the edge of the mountain, and simply- They're making it look like the SCP pushed him off. I'm pretty sure it's implied that he jumped. Oh, so I'm gonna comment. <laughs> Why would a Sherpa help them after they destroyed literally, literally everything? Yeah. Oh my god. stopped. I don't understand. They didn't just commit suicide here, and they surely didn't fly away. What's going on? The Sherpa turned his gaze away from the mountain he had been watching in the distance, and slowly lowered his lantern. As Kloss's eyes adjusted, he saw a faint light on the mountain across from them. He raised his binoculars to have a better what? look. It was a lantern. The light went out, and all that was left were those glowing red eyes. What? What? <laughs> what? You heard him. Two pairs of them now. Due to the happen. operative zone of SCP-5252 remaining immobile, Area 5252 encompasses SCP-5252, its known range of travel, and a one-kilometer buffer zone. No alterations or additions to land, floor... Like different things around the pole? Yes, sir. or fauna are permitted. All Foundation members are to undergo training protocol BSC-5252 to minimize damage to the area before being assigned to Area 5252. 
SCP-5252 is an approximately two meter tall humanoid entity of indeterminate race and gender which carries an oil lantern. Reported details regarding its appearance are sparse and unclear. SCP-5252 travels at will by unknown means throughout a 26.3 square kilometer section of land located in the central region of Nepal within the Himalayan mountains. The area includes a remote mountain pass, numerous hiking trails and a local village. A pattern of injuries, thefts and disappearances have been attributed to SCP-5252, most often seen on adjacent peaks or trails moving along at a walking pace. Sightings of this entity date back in local records to 1435, but oral tradition puts the potential first emergence of SCP-5252 within the 12th century. Instances of this entity coming into closer range of observers are primarily during inclement weather. Reports indicate that lone or paired climbers who become lost often mistake it for a Sherpa or rescuer and follow the entity back to the trailhead. SCP-5252 has only been observed as a dark outline of a tall humanoid figure. SCP-5252 stays several meters ahead of the observer and does not respond to verbal commands or inquiries, regardless of the language spoken. Once the observed figure reaches the trailhead, it will stop and wait for the hikers to catch up to it. Survivors report that the brightness of the lantern makes any details of the figure indistinguishable, but a dark hand is held out, open palm, to the lone or nearest human. If the individual fails to present SCP-5252 with an item, it will take an object by force or inflict non-lethal injury. Sightings and encounters with- Hey, wait, hold on. Can we go all the way back up here? Let's see. Yeah, non-lethal is crossed out. Which means they do lethal injury. Yeah. That's why I didn't read the cross out stuff, because they do do that. Also, SCP. just so you know how bad the clothes are, I have done a Google search. Yeah. Which immediately tells me, well, there's many clothes that popped up. None of these possible designs look like anything that they used in the video. Oh, no. Also, five, two, five, two. they, they be... showed this guy doing the shining shit. You know, when he was out in the snow. I actually never watched the movie. I only seen clips of it. But I at least know, like, he's out in the snow like this. Why did he make a shiny reference? Increasing in conjunction with rising oh numbers of tourists in the area. If preserving nature for our own benefit and survival isn't reason enough for you, how about not having the lantern bearer knocking on your door? Don't forget to check out... No, we're not, we're not doing that. Fuck off. <laughs> Okay, let me post those, so let me copy more. What, you were letting me the whole time? You... Oh. oh. Oh, I didn't know you, you were watching. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was... I'm not talking to you. Uh, oh. Like in the... I was just <laughs> yelling at Discord. Oh, I thought you were getting mad at me. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> no, no, Discord. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, I will say it was bad, but at least... At least it didn't destroy a bad topic like 4735. If you remember that one. Alright, the latest picture I found says... Is connected to an article that says all you need to know about people, culture, and tradition in Nepal. Wait, uh, hold on. Let's go back. Let's see, Let's go back a bit. Is it just? Is it just me, or they look, or the people in the video look darker than the people in the pictures they sent me? Well, technically, there are dark-skinned people in Nepal. Oh, okay. 
Let me look it up and show you. There is skin tone variation. So technically, it's racist by default by not showing the variation, but people in the mountains probably. All right. Oh. I'm guessing Bookworm's not here yet. Yeah, once Bookworm gets here, I'll, I'll share some news. But I don't want to wait till they get here. Let's see, where's I? Let's see, what's a good example? <laughs> Anyways. Well, I know one's gonna be a four. Only men in a video slash offensiveness. That's gonna be a four. This is not what I was looking for, but I just want to say, look at that old man. Oh. Oh, yeah, is that the mark they were talking about? Maybe. Like in the article? Oh, you're probably right. Yeah. Oh, that. I was just thinking, look how Oh shit! Is. And the guy they were interviewing in the video had that mark on them. It, it's it, it was stated in an article oh, that it didn't no. get removed. They didn't put the mark. Like let me double check. I'm pretty sure they they said it. Oh shit, if you look at it, everyone who there's a lot of people in those pictures who have the mark. Yeah. The spirit marked me before my family even did. Even after all these years, the suit still has not faded. So they didn't include the marks. Oh. Well then, I already added a four for only men. It's not offensiveness. Actually, wouldn't only having men in a video count as uh, count as offensiveness? Technically, only having men would mean they literally cut out every woman. There were at least two women in the article, and remember, the SEP had indiscriminate gender. Yeah, I mean, I already gave that category four. We have two fours. Oh, I oh mean, yeah, give racism a four too. Yeah. Yeah. Removal of character slash license. Yeah, they, they removed every character, and the ones they didn't remove, they all turned. Related. So, uh, three or four? What are you thinking? Well, they did cite the article, but everything else they did wrong? Right. Would you call that a three or a four? I'm saying that because they did way too much different stuff. I'll go with four, even if they included license. That's fair. Yeah. Edit gore or violence? Not really. I feel like that's a zero. They removed violence. Yeah, they actually removed violence. I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> So they added unnecessary violence towards a safe class anomaly and then added what took away violence from a keter. <laughs> Deviates from the plot of the article. Four. Yeah, pretty much. So, 20%. It would have had a much lower score if he added violence. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not angry they removed the violence, but somebody just fucked everything, too. 